recording is in progress. <laughs> Happy to be here. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for for chatting with me, Lisa. And uh, let me make sure I'm pronouncing it. Is, is it Somali? Somali. Somali. Okay. Somali. Put it together. Somali. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, no, thank you both for chatting with me. I really do appreciate it. Uh, the film is great. It really is. Um, thank you. It's such a joy. Um, I Somali, want, to sure, I want to make sure you uh, can oh. see Emma too. Can you see Emma on your screen? Oh, I can't. Is she here? Oh, yeah. there she is. There she is. You know why? <laughs> I have it set to speaker. Oh, so that's, that's why. why. She hasn't said anything yet. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. So I wanted to make sure. But it wasn't on there. I thought, oh, maybe Emma's not joining us. No, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Hi, Emma. Hi. Um, Honestly, to, to you all, thank you so much for the, the time to chat. The film is a joy. And uh, Sumali, I, just to get us started, I've heard that the film was inspired by your, your mother, your relationship with your mother. Uh, I was wondering if you could speak to that. Yes, of course, I'm happy to. Uh, she was really my, my inspiration for the whole thing. The, the relationship, the story is very much based on um, my mom and me in real life. And, you know, and the, the, the core of this story is really about a mother's love for her child and their mutual desperation to um, do what it takes to take care of each other and um, help each other survive. And uh, in so many ways, the character that I play, Tala, is, is based on my mom. So I'm, uh, extremely, I'm extremely honored that I got to, to do that and dedicate a movie like this to her and to people like her who do whatever it takes to to take care of the people that they love yeah absolutely I, that you know and i didn't know that before i saw the film but i can see you know reflecting back because there's a real ferocity to her character yeah and i uh, like that it, it's it's it goes both ways too it's from the daughter's point of view as well you know and uh it's it's both of them looking out for each other so whether or not whether or not you're a parent or whether you know you've been in a you know you're in a mother daughter relationship anyone who has loved someone deeply i think can relate to this story in their own way it's a it's a very universal um theme absolutely absolutely um i would love to hear from from all of you on this because uh, there's a very brief line it might be uh, Lisa's character that says that I could be wrong. Uh, but somebody says that the deal is a gift. And I'm just wondering how the three of you feel. Do you feel like the deal is a gift or is it a curse? You guys, um, do you want to start, Sumali? Oh, no, please, you. Yeah. Well, uh, what I love about this movie is the many, many times I've seen it, I still as I'm watching it, I question myself whether or not I would take the deal. And it really, it goes back and forth. You have money, but you don't have that much money. You have food, you don't have that much food. And ultimately you need to take your life. So is taking your life and separating yourself from your family and the people who love you, is it worth it? Is it worth those years of living somewhat comfortably? And can you survive without taking it? And it makes you really question your own character and the own, your own relationships in your life. And especially coming out of this pandemic, it really kind of makes you think like, what if things went as badly as they did during the deal? What would I do? So yeah, I think it's both. The, the deal is a gift and it is a curse. I agree with a lot of what Lisa just said. And um, the only thing that I can think of really is that if I, if I was put into that situation, I, I don't know if I could live those 20 years knowing that there was an end date to the time that I had with my, with my loved ones. It, I mean, as soon as anything in life, if you, as soon as you know that there is an end to it, it, it's, it becomes so much, so high pressure and the stakes become so high. And you, I think the re, your reaction to that can, um, 
can just influence how you then behave towards those people, which is exactly what you see in the relationship between Tala and Alan. Like Annalyn blames Tala every single day for having taken the deal, even though it means that they have a comfortable house and they have just about enough food. Um, so, but then at the same time, you know, if like Lisa says, if if the pandemic had gotten so much worse that we really would have struggled with resources and things like that, you know, what what would I have done? And I honestly, I've asked myself that question so many times and I still don't know the answer, but I would agree that it's neither or both, really. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Sumali, what do you think? Oh, I have, I, I, I feel like these two lovely little ladies have said it all. Um, <laughs> I don't know that I could add to it. I, 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 it's hard for me to not think like my character. I think I would, um, you know, I would take it and use it, use, use the resources to uh, set up, set up those that I love so that they don't have to take it. See, that's the interesting thing about this one in terms of other sci-fi dramas is so much of this involves what you can do for others in some ways. It's very interesting. Like you, yes, you have an end date. Nobody wants to know the, everybody wants to know the end date and no one wants to know what it is at the same yeah. time. Yep. Um, but, but your characters, well, all of your characters, when you consider the deal, mention other reasons to take it oh start a family oh you yeah. know you can set set yourself up for the next 20 years you just have to end your life no yeah, big deal do something for the greater good exactly it's it, there's something almost uh i'm i'm missing i'm missing the word now but there's something almost like almost positive about taking the deal it's not just it, it's such an interesting line that's why i thought it was so interesting about the film mm -hmm. um i mean that's I, you know that's the line that the bureau kind of spits out they say you know do take the deal it's for the greater good but the bureau obviously mm -hmm. has their own aims yeah they want you to die <laughs> yeah they you know so that line is kind of a bit tongue-in-cheek because yes of course it's yeah. it's positive in and of itself but um is it really for the greater good i don't know <laughs> yeah uh, it's a great question it's a great question and but uh, what it was one of the lines at the end you've received your fair share and you've enjoyed it now you may go in peace it's sort of like okay but i mean again the alternative i mean we're coming off of the other side of a pandemic so what's the alternative i i, I don't know it's just I really thought the premise was something something unique. I thought it was great. I'm so glad that that you thought of it the way you did because this is exactly what we want people to take away from it. Yes, at its core, it's a love story, but for mm -hmm. you to be able to give thought to what is this what is this society where the the cruelty is uh, you know is normalized and when you have these characters that are going through such a desperate time um, you really see, because of the sci-fi world we built, you really see that in sharp relief and you understand like how difficult it is. And then you ask yourself the questions like, well, what is, you know, is it a critique on our society now? You know, what, what are we going to be doing now post pandemic? This, this, the deal envisions a world, you know, past the pandemic and past climate change, which is still to come. So it is yet to be seen how we handle it as a society. And I want to yeah. just add, we, this was written and produced before the pandemic. <laughs> so oh, we, yeah, that's right. We fin we did our research. What? Yes. yes. Oh, I love that face. That's my favorite face. <laughs> when people find out we did our reshoots in December of 2019. Right before <laughs> the pandemic. Yeah, we didn't know any of, we didn't know anything. We would, we thought about this and we, and literally in post production, we were like, oh my gosh, you guys. The world is changing. We we need to get this out before this movie becomes a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's so incredible for all of us. Like, what do we do with this? Like, are we psychic? Did we predict. I, I yeah. love that face. Thank you. That's the best. That's it's the so best. Funny. Yeah. Well, I I mean, one of my one of my follow up questions was about you know this being a response to the pandemic. But uh, <laughs> what I'm saying is, what I'm hearing is, you called it. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I'm actually shocked by that. I just, uh, the, this is, it's so on point with everything we've been through for the last three years. Um, this is unbelievable. Um, well, yeah, and actually but, so, something, something that really occurred to me during the pandemic, which reminded me very much of this film is, is the idea of the lack of resources and that you do that you do maybe have to ration out what you have to the people who deserve it most. And that becomes a really tricky question. And, you know, in Europe, we really saw that in Italy where the hospitals were so overloaded in the beginning when it first came over, when the virus first came over, that the hospital staff had to make these absolutely heartbreaking, tragic decisions about who they could afford to put on a ventilator and who they couldn't. Um, the people who were older, who already had pre-existing health conditions, who maybe already didn't have that much time left to live, were not put on a ventilator and were left to die. And that that was so, that was just too close to the bone. And that's exactly what the Bureau in the film is trying to avoid. They're trying to avoid people getting too old so that they lose a lot of resources. Um, and that was, yeah, that, so well, after we filmed that and then, you know, I was sat at home watching the news and that happened, I was just like, oh. Oh, it's nice it really to get shivers down my spine. It's, it's really neat to hear that experience from you, uh, Emma, because the same was happening over here. Like we would see a news story and, you know, we would text it to each other like, oh my God, this, we, this, this, is, in, this is in our movie. And we would be yeah. texting it to each other in the same, you know, with the same sense of, uh, I don't know what the word is, but the same sense of dread. Well, of horror, like, really. Yeah. yeah. Well, by request, could your next film be something happy? Uh, just feel like <laughs> no, everything's deal okay too. and deal too. there's no conflict. <laughs> and okay. Everyone it would, be, it would be unwatchable as a film. It would just be so dull. But I mean, <laughs> there is hope. I'm going to say there is hope. There is hope in this film, even though, even though there's there is. Even though we're, we 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 managed to stumble into a, a sad topic, but um, there is a lot of hope in it. Which yeah. I will say, uh, you know, without saying how the film ends, the swerve that happens, you got me. Um, I I thought I knew where it was going, and you got me. You, you, so I was like, oh wow, okay. That's my favorite, um, and I will say, um, you know, when I when I approached Sean, our writer, our amazing screenwriter, with the idea, um, uh, the story idea that I had, kind of took it to the point before that twist, and, um, mm. and he was. He was like, as we were, I remember we were sitting at a cafe outside, this, you know, on a street in LA. And he was like, oh, I like that. Oh, but then what if we do this? And that, <laughs> that became the twist. So he was really instrumental in writing a great screenplay. Yeah, it, 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 it works well. It works really well. Um, I was wondering too, if you would like to talk, because the film, now again, knowing it, pre-pandemic is a little bit different but i'm wondering for for you all i mean i think emma you sort of addressed it a little bit there's the film has a lot to say about the healthcare system um i was just wondering uh sumali for from your perspective why was that so important for you to wrestle with in the script um i think that the concept in general of um how societies react to people in desperate situations is uh, is a is a compelling is a compelling idea to explore um, through this medium, and uh, I I didn't realize it till not too long ago. But some of the other movies that I have uh, worked on and produced since this movie all have that uh, that lens to it, and mm. how our societies treat people in desperate situations and you know we we see it whether it's um asylum seekers or people who are dealing with poverty and homelessness um you know there are a lot of issues that prevent them from gaining access to things that can better their quality of life so i i just i love i love sci-fi and i love the fact that when you when you craft and create your sci-fi world you can kind of write your own rules and we we did it in such a way that we created a very 
cruel and heartless society because when you do that you heighten the stakes and you can you know then you get this you know really up close personal view of Tala and Annalyn going through a really desperate situation and you know it it heightens the emotions of how you feel it um you know I think we're just going through a time where you know for, for me I want to put out I want to put out art that that increases empathy that builds empathy among you know among people and I think that's that's what we hope to do mm. Mm. absolutely well with that in mind speaking of empathy uh for all three of you one of the lines that caught my attention throughout the film is that fear makes you act not like yourself and i was wondering what the three of you felt about that line and ask the question does that justify actions does fear justify our actions if it's not ourselves Well, I think I think all the characters are tested in a situation that they never thought they would be in. And again, it makes you question what you would do, but it's hard to mm. know unless you're going through it. Like what fear, would it mean taking the deal to protect your child or is or would it make you not take the deal so that you could be with your child? Mm. But it's true. It um it really makes you question, but you can't know until you're going through it. It's a fair point. Yeah, I feel like for me, it really, that line, I mean, Atala spoke that line. Um, I really, yeah, I mean, similar to what Lisa said, it really is uh, for me about the regret that I feel like, you know, I think Tala wishes, there's a part of her that wishes she could have been more idealistic and fought you know, and not taking the deal and um, mm. still raised in a, in a, in a really good way and given her the best shot at her future. But, you know, also knowing the more pragmatic side, the chances of that actually happening, you know, the way we set up the world was that, you know, you could maybe survive a couple of years if you didn't take the deal, but surviving mm. until your child is, you know, 19, 20 years old, it's not likely. So, yeah, it's that it's that push pull, you know, the deal, the deal, is it a gift? Is it a curse? And, um, you know, in a fearful place, she took the deal, but um, mm. it's justified too. Yeah. 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 It's a really difficult question to answer. I'm really struggling to, to actually answer this because I, it, I sort of think that, yes, fear justifies actions by the very fact that it causes you to do things that, you know, that, that might be outside of your character. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky question. Does it justify it? Well, I don't know. Who, 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 context. Who it? Right. The con yeah. context matters. Yeah. The context is everything. Yeah. yeah. So I think if you're a very fear driven person, also, you might actually not do certain things because you're too afraid. So in some ways you could see Tala's decision to take the deal as a fear-based decision because she was too afraid not to take it rather than, mm. you know, um, or that Anna Lynn doesn't want to take it because she's too afraid to take it rather than because it's a horrible prospect. Um, but yeah, def I think I would say context, you know, who, who's, who, who's, whose actions are you talking about? And um, the context within which that action was done is, I think, very relevant to that question. These are deep questions you're asking. It's great. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to meditate Sci-fi. <laughs> Sci-fi yeah. asks big questions. Does. That's what I love about it. <laughs> it you know, and... Uh, just this moment of levity makes me, you know, want to just give give a shout out to Emma too for how well she mm. handled the humor in the script because it is such a it is such a dark world and um, her character uh, handles the humor and and you will you see how she uses humor to really get through it and you know you need these moments like we just had of that levity to laugh and to. <laughs> You know, it allows yeah, you us, have to. You, you have, have to. to. It allows us to connect with her character, but it also, which something that I think is unique for sci-fi or for this dystopian fair, is to see 
how the character uses humor to deal with the world. Hmm. I love that. About, I love that about you know. I love that about how Sean wrote in the script, and I love how Emma you performed it so well. Thank you. That's really sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it, exactly. it is. I mean, when things are that dark, you know, you either succumb to it or you try and keep your head above water by constantly making jokes about it, which <laughs> you know. <laughs> Which is better? Yeah, I don't know. Just, that's what does anyway. You did it in such an aniline way. I love it. Yeah. That, that was very sarcastic. Very sarcastic. Oh know. my gosh, that was one of the things that endeared <laughs> us to you from uh, from your audition. You know, from your initial audition mm. that just uh, made us fall in love with you. Mm. Uh, you you all did an uh, amazing job. Um, I, I have a feeling that you're not going to be able to answer this as we're we're starting to wrap up, okay. but. Uh, for the three of you, not your characters, obviously, for you, same situation, would you take the deal? Oh, gosh, here we go. <laughs> you know, okay, I'm just going to start it off. I think my rebellious spirit, uh, the more we talk about this, I don't think I'd take the deal. Mm. Also, because I love my children so much that the thought of me leaving them to deal with my death <laughs> I couldn't deal with so I would rather just try to you know <laughs> forge it out and be a bandit I don't know I'd be the the boyfriend character you know <laughs> making alcohol and <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I don't think I would I think that's I loved favorite. his character Oh, good. We do too. I did. Yeah, I am. Um, I, I mean, you know, I was talking about fear-based people just now. Well, I, I feel like I'm quite a fear-based person. So I think I would, I don't know. I honestly don't know, but I, I, I want to say that I wouldn't take it, but I think the honest truth is that I probably would. Emma, I'm, I'm with you. I'm too scared. I'm too scared of what it would mean to live without any kind of resources or help or money. I mean, you know, money makes the world go around. Like it's just, that prospect is really terrifying to me. So yeah, I think I'd be a bit chicken, take it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, yeah, and I wish, exactly. I wish I, would, I wouldn't take it, but I think I would take it for a slightly different reason though. I think, um, I don't, this is weird. I think there's some, um, there's some, weird comfort in knowing when your end date is and I'm the kind of person that's like okay I know it and I'm gonna make the very very most of every day again <laughs> <laughs> and I'll take that <laughs> uh, with the with the benefit of the the job and the re and the and the food you know the food uh rations and the how the, the roof over my head so I'm the only one living on my own here. <laughs> what the hell? Wait. You have you have them for 20 years, uh, Lisa. You have them for 20 years. You're good. All right, fine. <laughs> Which, Sorry, as we're man. asking, deep <laughs> questions, and I love your I love your honesty, Emma. I love that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm just you know a big chicken, and I'm quite selfish. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I like my hot showers. <laughs> It's so awful to it's say fair. that. That's fair. It's funny asking the question. I just feel like the worst Howie Mandel impersonator ever. Deal or right. no or deal? No deal. Like, yeah. Open the basket and there's a virus. Open the suitcase. There's a virus in it or something. Anyway, sorry. I digress. Oh gosh. Hey, this is the humor we all need. That's right. That's right. Um, well, for you all, as we wrap up, I, I just wonder what you hope people take away from from the deal. Wow, Molly, <laughs> we've um, I we've covered it. I think it's you know, oh my mom, you know, my mom always used to say, "What's mine is yours," and um, hmm. I really, you know, this is my love song to her to honor how fiercely she loved me. I I hope people take away that universal sense of love and how important you know family is and how. Uh, those bonds with the people you love, whether they're family or found family, um, you know, you you will often do whatever it takes to help someone, and uh, that's that's the love that I want to put out there into the world. Um, that's that would be my hope. 
Yeah, I hope that um, people are entertained because, you know, let's face it, what first and foremost, what we do is we work in the entertainment industry. So we ultimately want people to be entertained. But I think there are so many things in this movie that would provide food for thought um, and discussion. And I think, yeah, like Somali says, that central relationship between the mother and the daughter is just such a, a tender, beautiful story. And I hope that people are touched by that and that it maybe makes them think about their own loved ones and their own relationships with the people in their life and maybe, you know, reevaluate how, how we sometimes can treat people in our lives who maybe deserve better. I don't know. All of Lisa? the above. All of the above. Yeah. And just, it's a fun movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fun yeah. movie. It's a wild ride. Um, you don't know what's going to happen. I'm so glad you came back to that because yeah. you know, some of what we've talked about has been, it has been pretty deep. And uh, yeah, yeah. We, we made it. We made it. We made it to be a wild, fun ride. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a thriller. It should be thrilling as well. Yeah. <laughs> It is. There's some great set pieces in it too. I thought there were there was uh, it was really well done. Awesome. And yeah. and should should it come to pass, I'd be up for another deal. You know, like, yeah. let's see where the story goes next. It'd be it'd be interesting to see. Our dream is uh, to, but, but our dream is to serialize it one day. So we'll we'll <laughs> turn it into a TV show. So long as it doesn't have the same effect as this one did on the global culture. Oh well, uh, gosh. <laughs> We'll predict something better. We'll predict something better. That's right. That's right. Let's go, go, go a little more. Pot. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, thank you, uh, Sumali, Lisa, Emma. Thank you so much for the time. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for your honesty and your willingness to, to chat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.